air sealings, I mean, it's just basically stopping air. I mean, we can use two-part foam, we can use uh, a rigid material on one-part foam, uh, strategically placed dense pack cellulose works as an air sealing measure also. So we use this, something called Reflectix, which is a, kind of a bubble pack with foam on both sides that's easy to cut to size, and if you apply foam to its edges, it'll it'll uh, it'll create a seal. I think one of the most common places that we find in attics, and we just we just finished a multi-family apartment complex where a lot of the walls in apartments go straight from the basement all the way to the attic, and nothing stops the air moving. So if you cap off the top and or the bottom of that you've stopped a lot of air moving. So that's the kind of places where you could either use foam or you could use Reflectix and foam. Um, the problem with it is it's usually pretty dirty and hard to get to. Uh, if there's some attic insulation already, then you've got to move insulation out of the way to get to those holes. That's, that's in my opinion, the primary failing of most insulation contractors is they don't adequately prepare the attics before they blow insulation into them. Attic air sealing can definitely present a challenge. I think we would all prefer an attic to have no existing insulation so that we can just see where the penetrations are in the ceiling and go and foam those up properly. If there is, in which there mostly is, existing insulation already, we have to rely on, I rely on my instincts, I follow wires, you can see plumbing stacks and various penetrations coming through the insulation. Therefore, we know there's holes around there. We, we want to go find those holes and seal them up as to try to create a perfect plane across that ceiling with no penetrations in it. Chimneys always present a problem in attic insulation. Those present a lot of air leakage and because it's a chimney that's more than likely being used, we have to be careful as to the materials we use around it. We, we use high temp silicone and metal flashing around those simply for safety measures. Uh, we just had a crew guy get up in the, the knee attics on the house and found out that there's too much knob and tube in locations where we're not going to be able to use the knee wall as the pressure and the thermal boundary. So instead of that we're going to take the foam to the roof deck so that we encapsulate, we bring the whole knee attic into the thermal and pressure boundary. To do that, we're going to have to switch foams from the two pound foam that we use in the crawl space to a half pound foam. It's a less dense foam that has a different blowing agent. Instead of a refrigerant inside the cells, it has uh, carbon dioxide. This foam is lighter and will let water penetrate through it. So if we ever have a roof leak or anything like that, instead of staying on top of the foam and rotting the roof deck out, It'll actually percolate down through the foam, drip on the ceiling, and we can be able to find out where that roof leak is to fix it before irreparable damage is done to the roof.